Hello everyone and welcome to VTN Sunday. We're going to have a great time of worship. Jeannie's going to be ministering to us in song in a few moments. Today's message is part one of a series that I'll be bringing you over the next few weeks called The Kingdom of Heaven. Many Christians don't fully realize or grasp the idea of the Kingdom of Heaven. Originally, God planned for earth to be like heaven, which Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16. But because of Adam's sin and humanity's fall, God's perfect plan was delayed. But God sent His Son Jesus who saved us and redeemed us. And the problem is, although we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son, the kingdom of light, we have failed to switch systems we fail to switch back to heaven's operating system. So today, we're learning about what the kingdom of heaven really means and how we should operate in it. So stay tuned, but before we get into the message, here's Jeannie to get us started with a powerful song, I'm a Believer. Life is what you make it, just embrace it. Even through the heartache, sweeter days are yet to come. It takes patience to heal the situation. When I reach out, God will always be around. It all comes down to me. It all comes down to it's me. my responsibility. It's my Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6 verse 33 is a very special um, verse for me uh, because of February 11th, 1972, I got saved at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. I didn't go there to get saved. 
I went there to hear Johnny Cash. But I didn't know they were going to have a Grand Ole Gospel radio time originating from the Grand Ole Opry on Friday night. After the Friday night was Opry was over, you could stay in the Ryman Auditorium for the Evangel Temple Church, Pastor Jimmy Snow, <clears throat> and you could stay for his guests. This was the first radio broadcast, February 11, 1972. And it went on for 23 years, every Friday night, broadcast live uh, over WSM, uh, the old Opry uh, network. Well, I was up in the balcony. My wife and friends of hers had prayed for my salvation. And so when Jimmy Snow, I heard Johnny and June sing, and then when Jimmy Snow said, if you need a new life, Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to get that life. And he asked for a show of hands, so I raised my hand. He said, come down, let me pray for you. So I was up in the back, and we had to get all the way down. That Ryman Auditorium, by the way, is about the same size as this building. We patterned a lot of what we did when we built the church. We used the same brick, the same arched doors. All the things that we, we built uh, was because it meant something special to me. Um, the old Grand Ole Opry, the Ryman Auditorium, was built by Captain Tom Ryman who was a riverboat captain up and down the Cumberland River, and he got saved and born again, and he wanted to do something for God, so he built the Ryman Auditorium, and they named it after him, and it became the mother church of country music. Well, after the um, service was over, I came down to the front. I asked Christ into my life, and uh, <clears throat> there were several people that prayed for me. Jimmy Snow's wife prayed for me. Connie Smith prayed for me. Uh, and I had taken a picture of Connie uh, with my Polaroid camera as she was singing. And she was singing the song that Eddie Miller got saved by. Uh, Eddie and I got saved about the same time. He was the songwriter that wrote Release Me, Engelbert Humperdinck's hit song, Please Release Me. Please release me, let me go. Don't look like you don't know that song. <laughs> anymore well um, Eddie wrote that song in a nightclub as he was taking a break with his band which included Glenn Campbell on the guitar and uh, he heard the couple in the booth next to him and they were arguing and the woman said to the man please release me and let me go I don't love you anymore so Eddie started writing it down on a napkin Sold 23 million copies. Made Eddie a rich man off of their divorce. <laughs> and so Connie had sung, Don't Let Me Walk Too Far From Calvary, the night Eddie got saved. So we, you know, had some friends that we knew there and got to, you know, fellowship with them over the years. Well, <sighs> Connie wrote on the back of my picture after the thing was over, I asked her, would you sign my picture? She said, yes. So she wrote Matthew 6, 33. Well, I didn't know what Matthew 6, 33 said. I mean, I'd only been saved a few minutes. So I took it home, and I looked it up in the Bible. Now read it with me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And the things that he's talking about was what shall we eat, what shall we uh, wear, etc. And God was telling <clears throat> the uh, Israelites that you don't need to worry about all that. I will take care of you. If you will seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto you. Can you say amen? amen. Okay, now go to Mark chapter 4. Uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 1, verse 14. And I'm going to do my best to go very quickly um, and read you some scriptures that have to do with the kingdom of God. And then we're going to go over and look at the kingdom of heaven. Now you might wonder, what's the difference? These words are used interchangeably. And I thought I'd plug into what Pastor Scott's already started on about the kingdom. The kingdom of God... And the kingdom of heaven are used interchangeably throughout the scriptures. But there is a difference. The kingdom of God is all-inclusive 
of every realm of God. The kingdom of heaven is included in or under the kingdom of God. Now, you'll see all this out as we continue. The kingdom of heaven is the earthly sphere of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of heaven, now heaven's a real place. The Bible tells us where it is. It's in the sides of the north of the universe. It's a real place. God is there. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is here, but they're there. There are angels there. You and I have loved ones there. But the kingdom of heaven is what Jesus told Peter, I am going to deliver to you. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the earthly sphere. The kingdom of heaven is an operating system. Now don't let that throw you. The kingdom of heaven, it, it, heaven is a place, but the kingdom of heaven is an operating system. And that's why Jesus told Peter, he said, uh, upon your recognition of who I am, I will build my church and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We'll read it in a minute. I'll give you the keys. The literal translation means I will give you the keys from the heavens. I will give you the authority. I will tell you how heaven, heaven operates. And I want you to operate that way on earth. So the keys of the kingdom were the authorities, the dominion over all the earth and everything that's on it. And he said, it's the sphere of influence and profession. Because whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, in Mark chapter 1, and let's look at verse 14. After that John was put in prison, Jesus came to the Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Say that out loud. The gospel of of the kingdom of God. Now run over to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Hope you brought your Bible. The giant screens are to support what we're reading and studying and talking about. But when you get face to face with an obstacle, a demon spirit, sickness or disease, there won't be any giant screens. You'll have to know what the word says for yourself. <laughs> so always bring your Bible. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. And Romans 14, 17 tells us what the kingdom of heaven is. The kingdom of God is. It is not with observation. That's what the scripture says. Go over there with me and read it. Just turn over a few pages. It says the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. He was referring to those that had been raised under the law of Moses. It's not what you eat. It's not ordinances. It's the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you become a Christian, when you get born again into the kingdom of God, Jesus said the kingdom is within you. Don't be moved if somebody says the kingdom's over here or the kingdom's over there. The kingdom of God is within you. And over the years... Uh, we've had instances where people have said, oh, Jesus is out in the desert. Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, is out in the desert, and she's prophesying to people. And people have taken trips and gone to see her here, Mary. Mary is dead. She is not in the desert, and she's not prophesying to anybody. Uh, there, were, there were people that were driving by a house one night, and uh, the way the light was shining, it formed a cross. In the window of this house, all of a sudden, that's a sign. The kingdom of God's being manifested. 
No, uh, the lights are just shining in a particular way. And people have been looking for signs forever. Even the disciples said, Jesus, we, we would that you'd show us a sign. And he said, there'd be no sign shown to this adulterous and wicked generation. Ooh, well, if it was an adulterous and wicked generation back then, 2,000 years ago, what would you call it today? <laughs> Matthew 6, 33. We read that. Matthew 12, 28. That's what I just quoted. So we're to believe the gospel of the kingdom. That's what the 144,000 Jewish evangelists are going to be doing uh, when they preach uh, the gospel of the kingdom. Go over to Matthew 24 to the rest of the world. Now, I may say some things that will shock some of you, but that's all right. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24. And uh, if you look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When Jesus is teaching what's called the Olivet Discourse, he's teaching his disciples who are Jewish, who are not born again. There's no mention of any rapture in this particular passage of Scripture, but he does reference the kingdom of God. And he said, and the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom of God shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then it goes on and tells you that the uh, 12 a thousand from each uh, tribe, twelve hundred forty-four thousand Jews will be preaching during the great tribulation period. And there's not much teaching on the great tribulation period, but many of the things that we have thought are supposed are going to happen in the last days are really not going to happen until the tribulation period. Now it says here that the gospel of the kingdom be preached to the world. So we, we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom was the king is coming. Jesus is coming. The Jews, Arabs, uh, all nationalities and races and religions, they all believe a king is coming. But we know he's already come. And we know that the king is Jesus. And we know that the kingdom is his kingdom. And we're in it. And so the 144,000 Jewish evangelists are going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What we preach today, the church, what the church company is preaching today by and large is the gospel of grace according to the apostle Paul. But they didn't have the gospel of grace. They had the kingdom promise that the Messiah, the king of the kingdom was going to come and set up his kingdom and we're going to live happily ever after. They were under the boot heel of Rome. They were uh, stressed out. They were being martyred and killed. And they were always asking, when, when are you going to come set up your kingdom? When are you going to deliver us from the boot heel of Rome? Uh, what's the sign or the seasons we should be looking for? And he would constantly let them know uh, the signs and the seasons are not for you to know yet. Are you here? But the 144,000 Jewish evangelists are going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. First trip to Israel years ago, our tour guide, who was named David Kedron, named after King David and the Kedron Valley, which is the valley, if you've seen the pictures of Israel, the Dome of the Rock, the Gold Temple, if you see the valley in between them, that's the Kedron Valley. Jesus will sit down on the Mount of Olives. He'll go across and he'll go into the old city. And he said, uh, and he quoted all this to us because the, the tour guides, they're not just local cab drivers. These are university trained individuals, speak many languages, and they know the Bible better than you do, but not in their heart, just in their head. And so he said, now, you Christians are looking for Jesus' second coming, or he said Messiah. You're going to look for Messiah's second coming. We said, yeah, that's, that's true. He said, well, we Jews are looking for his first coming. And he said, now, if I'm alive when Jesus hits down on the olives, the Mount of Olives and goes across to the old uh, Golden Gate, he said, I'm going to push my way through the crowd. I'm going to pull on the hem of his garment, and I'm going to say, pardon me, sir. Have you been here before? <laughs> you, could almost, you could almost sense the hairs on your back of your neck standing up. 
But unless he gets saved and born again, he won't be able to do that. So they're looking for the king of the kingdom to come back. And, you know, I've heard all my life, I've probably taught it myself, and I hear it occasionally, everybody's looking for worldwide revival. We're all looking for this last worldwide revival, this phenomenon that is going to take place, and everybody in the world is going to be born into the kingdom. Not until after the rapture of the church. Not before. But after. And you can read this over in Revelation chapter 7. I, I think... I think we need to teach more about uh, what's going to go on after the rapture. And we need to share it with people because people don't know. And, and you know, if they don't make the rapture, they're going to have to face all of this wrath and judgment that's going to take place after the church is gone. And I don't know if we'll get to this over in Thessalonians. The church, by and large, the body of Christ, is the restrainer that is restraining all of the characters of the tribulation period, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast system, the man of sin, they cannot take center stage to begin the tribulation period until after the church is gone. Now, there are people that have different opinions. You might disagree with me. You might not even believe in a rapture. Uh, you might not believe it's till mid-trib or post-trib or whatever. I believe the rapture is going to take place before the great tribulation period. Okay. Then after we're gone, after the church company is gone, and, and think about this, folks. We, we kind of pass over it very lightly. We've overcome a lot of things in this country. We've overcome two world wars, one and two, Korea, Vietnam, all the ones in the uh, in the Middle East, we've overcome assassinations of presidents. And, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, we've, we've overcome 9-11. Uh, we've come, overcome a lot of things. But after the rapture, we won't overcome them. The world population is what, 8 billion just take 10% of that. Just assume that 10% of the world's population. Another thing we don't think about, we don't think about all the other nations. We only think about America. We only think about us forward no more. We only think about uh, the United States. But you've got to realize Jesus died for all men, all races, all faiths, everybody. So if this worldwide revival is going to take place, it's going to take place in the whole world. Jesus died for every man, every woman, every child. Well, when this rapture takes place, America, Africa, India, continents, they will not recover from the rapture because millions and hundreds of millions of people will be gone. I trust today's message has been a blessing to you. I'll continue with part two of this message next Sunday. Be sure and join me. It's very important for us as believers to understand how the kingdom of heaven operates. But it's even more important for you to have a relationship with Jesus. Do you know Jesus or did you know about Jesus? If you don't know him, pray with me and you can know him personally. Just close your eyes, don't be distracted, and just pray, Jesus, I believe you're God's son. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart, Jesus, and save me now. Amen. Very simple prayer, but if you meant it in your heart, said it with your mouth, Jesus came in. If you pray with me, I'd like to send you this little booklet called God Loves You. It's my gift to you. It'll help answer questions as you get started in a Christian life. 
just go online at vtntv.com. You can download the book for free, or you can call 1-888-641-3375. Tell the operator you prayed that prayer with Pastor Caldwell, and you asked Jesus to come into your life, and we'll send you the booklet free of charge. It's always a blessing to hear from you and receive your prayer requests and praise reports. And always remember, we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, please let us know. You can mail us at prayer at vtntv.com or you can call 1-888-641-3375. Now stay right here. I'll be right back after this message. The Father is waiting patiently for the precious fruit of the earth, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we're in a time period now that the body of Christ has never been in before. You know, there's a, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of false information out there. And so I wanted this book to be about the truth. The knowledge of the truth makes you free from worry, from anxiety, from fear. To order Seasons, Signs, and Spiritual Things by Pastor Happy Caldwell for $11.99 plus shipping and handling, call us at 1-888-641-3375 or log on to our website, www.vtntv.com. Build your biblical understanding and be ready for the coming of the Lord. Be sure and order your copy of Seasons, Signs, and Spiritual Things today. I believe it will help you understand the end times. Remember, VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me and Jeannie on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next Sunday at this same time. And remember... Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch on demand. Log on to vtntv.com and click watch. VTN is also on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-888-641-3375. Ask for the offer number on the screen. And join us again next time for VTN Sunday with Happy and Jeannie Caldwell.